guys, I have some important information on the Honeywell Home uh, electric baseboard thermostat. I need you guys to watch this video. There's important information that may save your house from burning down. So please look through the video. All right, today I'm going to show you guys how to replace one of these. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is a four wire 220 setup. As you can see here, it ended up melting pretty bad. Um, so to replace this, it's real easy. You know, just undo it, you know, and just connect it back the way it was. But the problem is, if you have this happening, there's a reason that this happened. And I'm going to show you. For my particular situation, my landlord has these, and they're really rusty inside. So I went to take the wire cap off, and you could see a lot of rust that fell down. Now these both do work. There's one here and one right there, and they both run off of that thermostat. So if you look there, <coughs> <coughs> If you look here, this needs to be cut and redone. And if you look right there, that's green. So that needs to be cleaned off. The rust on the unit itself is not an issue. But the when you have rust on the wires here, it's going to add resistance to your load. So these things just pop right off. That you just kind of pop it down and it'll hang. Um, there's a connection on this side. And there's a connection on this side. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to clean up the connection. And then uh, this is the main reason. Like don't, don't just replace your thermostat. There was a reason why it overheated. And the, the reason usually is corroded wires. You know, this is right underneath a window. So when it rains, this gets rained on. And I don't even know how old these thermostats are. But they do still work. So all we have to do is clean up all the connections. And it should work. Um, so yeah, I'll show you that now. How to clean up the wires. Alright, so make sure your breaker is turned off. Before you even start. This thing is really bad. I don't even think I can unscrew it. Oh, there we go. As you can see, this is completely rusted and destroyed. So that's not usable anymore. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to clip these past the corrosion. Now you're going to want to strip these. Press pause. All right. So what you're going to need to get rid of the corrosion is you're going to need some good old baking soda, obviously. You don't need a big bag like this, but I got it for the pool. And you're going to need some good old-fashioned... Any kind of vinegar girl will do you. I'm using this because this is what I got. And you're going to need regular old table salt, like iodized salt. So... For the to get rid of the corrosion, what we're gonna do? We're gonna throw some vinegar in the bowl, and then you're gonna throw a decent amount of salt in there. You grab another bowl. I'll grab a green one, so you can see when it changes colors. You're just going to grab some regular old water. And 
and a whole lot of baking soda. We're going to take the baking soda. You mix it up till it looks like milk. Just like that. Same thing with the salt. You wanna mix that salt up. Where's uh where's my metal? You're gonna wanna get one of these metal um brushes. Metal toothbrush. Press pause. So unfortunately, the one that I did in my living room, I'll show you the result of the one in the living room, but this one is actually even worse. You can see how bad that is, look at that. And uh, all these wires, this is in my basement. Um, this is just a broken one that I'm not even using, but I'm gonna show you how to clean it up regardless. So this is the one I'm gonna show you how to clean. I lost the footage, my phone crashed, so this is the one I'm gonna show you on. But I'll also show you the one in the living room that I fixed. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do, you're going to take your wire brush with your vinegar and salt. And this you can unplug. As you can see, that's pretty bad. We're going to worry about this right now. Um, to get... To get a decent amount of the vinegar on there, do use the toothbrush first. Because it's going to kind of, you know, it's going to be more wet than the metal. Now, if, you're, if your stuff is really bad like this, like this is really bad. Like, look at, like, look at, that's pretty bad. Let's see, like, we'll do, we'll do the terminals and we'll do this one. This one looks pretty bad. Look at that. So we'll do the terminals in that. So you're just gonna wet it. Get it nice and wet. Be liberal with the vinegar and salt. Just let it sit there. You're gonna wait about five minutes. Press pause. All right, it's been about five minutes. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna dip your wire wheel wire brush in here and you're just gonna give this a little scrub this is kind of a bad um, show you on this wire you can see it's turning back to orange or uh, see it's nice looking you can see it on camera, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is going to need, you know, depending on how bad your stuff is, you might need to scrub it a few times. This one's looking pretty bad. Um, you may need to get, you know, if it's this bad, this is just a speaker terminal. If it's really bad, just cut it off and put a new one on. It's just a speaker terminal. You can get them. Um, but if it's not too bad, you can clean it up. So what we'll do is we'll we'll let we'll scrub this. You can see it's starting to get shiny again. These you you're gonna have to really scrub really good over here, like. Especially this connection here. You can see that, right? Mm -hmm. You got to really scrub this thing good. Now, I'm not going to take, you know, a real long time doing this. Getting it clean. Because this, this one is garbage. It's not hooked up. It's, uh, it's essentially a piece of junk. But as you can see, you can clean up a wire really nice. Um, after you get done and you get it somewhat, you know, clean, I'll show you what mine looked like after I was done. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to take your, your bowl of 
water and baking soda and then you're just gonna do this this is gonna neutralize the effects of the vinegar so you're gonna want to do that you know do it like that this will keep it looking nice obviously like I said if you if it's too bad and you're not getting that shiny look like if it's stained black you could hit it with a, a wire reel brush is one option but if the wire right here is really corroded and you're not getting it clean, I would suggest cutting this off and just putting a new speaker terminal on it. But uh, if you look, uh, this didn't turn out too bad. All right, so this is the one in the house, like I said. You can take a look. You see how I got everything nice. I mean, it's a little corroded, but it's pretty much back to what it should be same thing with the the wire terminal i did the same thing uh i'm not gonna take this off because you can see it's already twisted but i got this really nice and then i also did the thermostat wire you can see i didn't really do a good job on that it's just basically it just tells the temperature tells uh the thermostat when it's too hot to shut off so but yeah basically um if you do this to all the connections and you're still having a problem with your thermostat it means you're running too much amperage you may need to buy a smaller one of these or only run one so you got to check the amperage on these things uh i'll show you what i did the thermostat now so this is the new thermostat what you're gonna want to do you see these holes here every once in a while after you replace this you're, you're gonna want to take your nose and just smell here and see if you start smelling that that burnt plastic burnt electronic smell um, so I have this turned to off I'm gonna pull it off and I'm gonna show you real quick all right so I turned off the breaker as you can see, here's the red ones. What I would suggest to you is what I did. This is this is going on, what is it, three days, babe? Four days? I did this three or four days ago. <coughs> Take one wire off, grab the new one, and replace the exact same wire in the same spot. Then the next wire, basically like how you do spark plugs, you really don't need to know what you're doing. Just replace each wire exactly to where they were. What I would suggest to you is leave this out hanging. As long as you ain't got kids that are going to come over and touch this, you're going to turn it on. You're going to run it for a few hours. Then you're going to go to your breaker and cut the breaker while this is still on. And then come over and set your finger here. Set your finger here. Set your finger here on the wire. See if these wires are heating up. If your wires are still heating up, it means you didn't get rid of enough corrosion or you have too much baseboard. Like I said, if you're running too much baseboard off of this, you're gonna melt it. So if it's still happening after you install this, and you fix the corrosion you're running too much amperage so run one baseboard or it'll be a little expensive but you should if your baseboards are good say you're running two 10 footers sell them and buy two five footers so that you're running half the amperage and this will keep your house from burning down so this is very important this is not like a joke this is not 110. These, this is a 220 line. So, um, I just want to make this video as, as, as a not really installation video, but more of a safety video. People that are having problems 
with their Honeywell thermostats. As you can see, mine are nice and cool. They look stock still. They're nice. They're, there's, no, there's no meltage. And I've been running this thing on, on 75 degrees for about three days. I mean, it's, it's like summer in my living room. So, I hope you guys listen and you, and you learn something. And uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll help you the best I can. Thanks for watching.